In today's video, we're gonna take a look at this little wood burning stove, which has got some really cool features that I've not seen in any others and 100% made in the USA. That's what's coming up next here on Survival on Purpose. Welcome back to Survival on Purpose, your home for trustworthy information and gear reviews related to camping, survival, and general preparedness for regular folks. My name's Brian, thanks for joining me. And as I said, today we're gonna to take a look at this stove from the folks at Siege Stoves. It's a little compact, um, collapsible folding wood stove. A lot of uses for these we're gonna talk about. We're actually gonna cook. I've got some steak here <laughs> and some bread we're gonna to toast. We're gonna to do that here in just a minute. First, I want to give a big thank you to the sponsors for this video, the folks at Groove Life. Groove Life makes some really cool stuff. Um, they make the ring I'm wearing and the belt. Let me just show you this real quickly. Now, to be completely transparent with you, I don't wear this belt. Not because it's not a good belt, but because I carry a concealed firearm and this is not a gun belt. But if I didn't carry a concealed firearm, this is the belt I would wear. Because check this thing out. First of all, it's got just a little bit of stretch. Not much, just enough give you a little flex when you're moving. But what's really cool about it is this buckle. It's just a, uh, if I get it right, yeah. So it's got a little hooks here and this magnet and it just, it just hooks on. You get it set how you want to. These buckles are designed to slide through a standard belt loop and just, man, it's really, really easy to deal with and it's extremely comfortable. So, and I've worn this around the house um, and it is very comfortable. But like I said, if you wear a gun, I, this is not the belt I recommend, but if you wear a ring, this is the ring I recommend. They make these Zeus silicone rings. I've been wearing silicone rings for a few years because I got tired of losing expensive gold rings and they're a lot safer. What's really cool about this is they feature, because it's Groove Life, they feature these grooves in here. Can you see that? And as I've said before, these little grooves are not just for decoration, they are for circulation to minimize perspiration because they, they let air flow through there. Been wearing this thing for a few months now. It is extremely comfortable, extremely durable. They come with a lot of different colors and they are really, really cool. So anyway, that's the folks at Groove Life. I'll put a link in the video description below if you wanna check them out. And thanks to them for sponsoring today's video. Okay, so that out of the way, let's talk about this stove. Let me give you a close up here. I might just take you down to the old stump top for this one. Okay, here is the Siege flat pack stove. This is the titanium version. It's also available in stainless steel. Uh, the titanium version is 140 bucks. Again, 100% made in the USA. Uh, as you see it here, it weighs 11.4 ounces. The stainless version is 90 bucks and weighs about 21 ounces. So uh, more money equals less weight, most always. And it's also available with some side toasters which add about two ounces to it. So there's that. Now, so I'm gonna take this thing apart and just show you how easy it is to put together and how you put it together so there's no confusion. So when you buy the stove, it's gonna come with these cross members and also has a bottom in it, which I like. So, oh, let me show you just how you put this thing together. And then I'll tell you a couple of things that I like about it just from the assembly. So first of all, let's go ahead and show you the, uh, this is the total package disassembled. And it weighs, again, as I said, just like this, everything, this weighs 11.4 ounces. And it is 5.6 ounce inches by 5.2 inches by 0.15 inches thick. So pretty, pretty thin and pretty lightweight. So, so here's how you assemble it. Uh, it doesn't matter, you have to do any particular order. All the pieces are exactly the same. Just take these things and put them so the, the wide part is tapered so the bottom is narrower. So the wide part goes to the top. Just uh, put the uh, together like so. Same thing like so, and then you gotta make sure you don't turn them this way, you gotta, because they're, they're opposite, so each, each one is, is interchangeable. And then finally, one more time here, like so. I can make anything look hard. And then the, <laughs> once those three and the last one, you just have to flex it down just a little bit to get it to uh, where it needs to be. And there you go, there's your slot. Okay, so the next thing you do is you put the, uh, cross pieces together and you notice there's two different style cross pieces. You get two like this and two like this. These that look like they have little flames on them go on the bottom. Tells you there's a flame down there. And so just put it in like so. You can either put it 
like this 90 degrees. I think it's more stable if you put it like this and just put that down there. There's some little shoulders on here that you put in the corners and that's it right there, sits there. Then just take the uh, floor plate, drop it in, push it down good. It fits in there really well, gives you a nice little floor plate. That gets it off the ground so you can get airflow underneath here, which is really good. And it's got, uh, as you can see, there's some holes. Oh, you can see the holes and stuff in there, so pretty good there. Now, let me put it back on here and push it down where the little, the little flame things come through the holes. Then take this one, put it together like so, and this one cannot go diagonal because it's a little wider at the top. So you're going to put it on like so, find the slot, and it's going to go between the last two. And the reason there's all these different slots on here, I'll show you that in a different, in just a minute, but... And there we go. It's complete. Just need to load it up and cook some steak. Okay, so I'm here at my outdoor Julia Child kitchen, I kind of prefer Justin Wilson, <laughs> but I ain't got no them onions. Anyway, <laughs> I digress. So I've got the stove here. I've actually got um, ooh, some little, get off of there, a little side toasters I'll show you in a minute. And their large uh, flat pack grill, which I'll also show you in a minute because it's pretty cool. Got a piece of steak here. It's a half a ribeye. I got a couple pieces of bread that, um, <laughs> This is sourdough from Panera Bread. I went there to get my wife and I a couple salads last week and they had a, I ordered a loaf of bread. It looked like it was small on the uh, picture. It was huge and it's good. I've got a little butter in here. Let's uh, see, I've got my uh, Stanley kind of folding cup, which is pretty cool. Just let me show you that real quick because it is pretty cool. So the handle snaps down like so. It's got a lid on it with a strainer hole. It comes with two of these plastic uh, insulated cups and it's a, uh, 20 ounce got, got measurements shown here, so pretty neat there. And I also got a, um, a bag of black Hampstead tea from London, just because sometimes I like, I like to have a cup of tea instead of coffee when I'm camping or whatever, and so let's just pretend I'm camping. And I've got um, some water in the uh, really cool um, Aquabot, which you can pump it up and spray with it. <laughs> um, Ferro rod, this is the... Uh, Exotech Light, or X, whatever the name of it is, this is Exotech. Old school knife here, went with a PKS. I believe this is the, uh, like the, um, um, I don't know which one it is, but it's a PKS knife. And got the grill, like I said. And then I have got some cans, and I'll show you that later. Now, for fuel, I got this big old bag of sticks. Now. We'll talk about that for a minute. What, what I think is one of the benefits of a stove like this is uh, this isn't full, right? Mostly small stuff, smaller than a pencil. So certainly this would make a fire very easily and it would make a pretty, pretty roaring fire for a few minutes and it would be gone. If you're trying to cook on this, it'd be really difficult to do that in an open fire because it's gonna be gone before you can re really get your food done. The benefits of a stove like this is it's contained, so typically you can, you can cook and get uh, you get more BTUs you know, per minute, basically, because it's all contained, if that makes sense. So that being said, um, got one more thing I forgot to show you. This is a piece of fat wood. And so that's what I'm gonna use to start it. Now, as I said, these seed stoves are all made in the USA. And the, 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 uh, I spoke with James, uh, the owner, founder, and whatever of seed stoves, and he's a guy from New Zealand that moved to the USA because he likes freedom. So um, the stoves are really, really solid as far as I can tell. I'll say this, there'll be a link in the video description below. When you go to his website, it is chock full of information to the point of information overload. It's quite possibly the busiest website I've ever seen. Um, and James and I talked about that. He, he really wants to try to revise that. But it's, it's got a lot of information on there, but it is, uh, you really gotta, you gotta, you gotta focus when you're watching it. Okay, we'll just say that when you're looking at it. But the, um, I'll, I'll put a link to the sales page so at least you won't have to wade through quite as much information if you wanna get one of these. And they're good stoves. So anyway, let's get to it. We're gonna start with some sticks and I'll give you a close up and we'll load this thing up. Okay, if you've seen uh, any of my fire videos, you know that f the more attention you pay to the preparation for the fire, the less attention you have to pay to maintaining and also just to getting it going. So what I've got here, I've got some, some 
fatwood um, fuzz that I scraped up. Got some fatwood shavings here. Got some smaller stuff, some a little bit larger stuff, and some slightly larger stuff. Now, there's a video on, on the Siege, um, Siege Stove's YouTube channel that shows James uh, how he recommends set his up. And he's got some paper in the corner, uses a couple pieces of paper and some small twigs, and then a larger wood on, on the kind of the outside. And, and the, the thought by process behind that is, if you're going to boil water or whatever, then flame is okay. If you're going to grill, like, cook steak, like we're going to cook a steak, you really want coals. So um, that's a better way to do it. So we're going to try it Brian's way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of these and just put them on the bottom. And it's kind of in a jumble up. You know, you want to, you want to provide airflow, right? Take some of these, put them on the bottom. You know, just kind of give it some air. Uh, kind of mix up mess. Then I'm going to take this, all this fat wood here and just kind of put it in there too because once it starts going it'll go and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this fat wood and just kind of sit it in there like so we're going to try now let me see if i can give you a better close-up i'm going to try to just get that fat wood going and then we'll start putting some wood in it now again to be very clear this is not the way that uh, james recommends doing it but this is brian's way so we're going to see if we can. Hmm. Okay, so since I've got this down in here already, instead of using, instead of using the, uh, trying to use a ferro rod and scrape it in there, I'm going to use my favorite ferro rod, which is right here, and I'm going to light this little piece of fat wood. I'm going to drop it down in there and get the rest of the fat wood burning. And then I'm going to start putting some more of these little small twigs on there. Just kind of get the fire established because it'll burn down as well, as well as up. And I want to go ahead and get these in here and going and then, you know, to get some, some flame established and we'll start putting the bigger stuff on. And... One of the things I always try to do with these little stoves is to not interfere with the, uh, I'm gonna put some bigger wood on there now just to give it time to, to kind of get, get it burning. I try not to interfere with the grate with, with the fuel. Now, you can definitely load this from the corners and I'll show you that in a minute, but let's go ahead and let that get going while I put this on. And then this is gonna go, ooh, it's hot. I should have left that on there. Ooh, it's hot, it's hot, it's by golly hot. Ooh, it's hot. Yeah, it's hot. Should have left the grate on there, so doofus moves. Okay, there we go. That's what happens with live video. You don't get you don't get a do-over. So I'm gonna put some of this bigger stuff in there too now. And as long as you don't get above the level of the grate, it won't interfere with anything we put on the grate. So, but if, you can see it's burning pretty good. We got a nice flame going, so uh, this would be a good opportunity, I think, just to go ahead and um, get the get the water boiling for some tea while we're getting some coals going for the, for the steak. So, let's set this here. Uh, James sent me this cool little poker right here too, which is pretty cool. And we'll put, I'm just gonna put about 12 ounces in here because I don't want, that's probably too much for tea, but we'll do that, about 12 ounces. Tea's probably more like eight ounces, but you know. Just go ahead and set it on there and see how long it takes us to get to get a bowl in there very stable as you can see and i'm just going to keep feeding it some wood here i mean it, the goal the end goal would be to stop feeding it and just allow the coals to be there to cook steak on but you know you got to get some you got to have some heat to make those coals so you can certainly use charcoal or wood pellets or anything like that as well 
you know, but uh, this sucker's hot, man. It's putting out some heat, intense heat. Now, one of the things I like about the stove is that it, is, it doesn't have that big hole in the bottom. A lot of these bottom feed stoves, you wind up with stuff falling out and ashes falling out and it's just uh, there's a big hole that weakens it sort of so that provide that, that kind of makes the stove a little weaker i'm going to put these on now i should have done that already before we got the, got the heat going because man oh man i got stuff in the way now let's see shoot down okay that one's there and this goes on the outside like that. Oh, no, no, like this. Yep, should have done this before it got hot too. So those are the little toaster ed edges that go on there, which are, which are pretty cool, because that allows you to toast some bread. And we're gonna do that in just a minute. Which is, you can also toast it in the grill, but our grills, by the way, this is the grill. It's gonna be occupied with a steak. So loosen those handles up like so. We're gonna get a little wing nut here. Just tighten that wing nut up, gives you a good handle there. Same thing on the other side. So that's gonna be your handle. And then you just put your uh, put your meat in between there and clamp it down and just put it on the grill. We're gonna do that as soon as the uh, tea gets a going here. And it's almost boiling now, pretty good. Put some more wood in there. So we can get it down to some coals. I don't want to do is have a half cooked steak and have to uh, redo all this stuff. I have to redo the video because I screwed it up so bad. So <laughs> just keep putting some wood in there. And ideally you'd have bigger chunks of wood maybe that you sawed out or whatever, but I'm just trying to do this like everything here I broke with my hands. So, and this is stuff I just picked up in the woods. Um, so there's really no, uh, not super hard wood. It's not like something that's been cut and dried, you know, like really good cooking wood. It's just kind of the stuff you would find laying around. And that's that's kind of what I think is cool about this stove like this is because you don't have to, ha you don't really have to carry fuel with you if you're somewhere that's gonna have wood. You know, and I guess obviously that depends on your locality. If you're in the desert, you might not have anything like that, but for um, any kind of woodland area, this is a pretty, pretty handy little deal. So all these laser cut holes around here provide plenty of ventilation. There's ventilation underneath it. You get good airflow under it. You can see we got a nice, it's almost a chimney effect going. A lot of air airflow, which is really, really important to getting a good, good heat and good um, combustion. And I think this wood is a little bit punky, so not gonna be the best wood for um, making coals, but we're gonna endeavor to persevere. Okay, while that is uh, cooking, I'm gonna, um, or while the water's boiling, I'm gonna show you uh, another cool thing about uh, from siege stoves real quickly. You know what, it'd probably boil a lot faster if I were to put this top on it. Even better. As long as I don't melt that plastic handle on the top would be good. So I think one of the original items that Siege Stove made was these cross members. And what's cool about them is they're not just cross members, they are tools. They, um, see the little flames there are actually tools. They allow you to use any kind of can, a number 10 can, a coffee can, a paint can, or whatever to make your own stove. So if you just carry these, you can find a can, you can make a very functional stove. And I'm gonna show you that right now while we're waiting on this water to boil. It's getting there, it's almost there. Take yourself, find yourself a baton, and you just, um, I'm gonna put it back here. Can you see that okay? Can you see that okay right there? I don't wanna put too much knocking on the wood there. And just knock some holes in it, right? And twist it, right? You make yourself a hole. You should go around doing that you know, enough times so that you have a uh, lot of airflow there. Well, I think you get the idea, right? Do the same thing on the bottom, and then 
these things are designed, you can either just um, poke those in, drive them in. Actually, you would drive, you drive these in first, right? Like so, let me just show you that. That's after you make the holes in the bottom, but for brevity's sake and time's sake, I'll show you that so you can knock those in like so. So then you got your feet on here, right? These are designed so that you can put them like so, and they will fit on a multitude of cans up to including a paint can. So this one would go about right here. And this one actually, I'm off centered, so let's get it centered. Here, 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 and here, yeah, so here, here. It's even got a little ridge to fit the loop there. And then you have, you got your holes in there, you got a stove that you made with just a can and the cross members. I think that's pretty cool. And we got boiling water here now, let me just show you that. Can you see it? All right, and let's make some tea. And we will, uh, get ready to start cooking this, this steak. We'll let that kind of steep there. I like some of them there onions. So we got a very small flame. I think we're gonna go ahead and go with the, uh, I'll burn that up while I'm here, what the heck. We're gonna go ahead and go with the uh, steak. So, boom, boom, move you out of the way now. Oh, uh, well, I said we had a small flame, but I started it up, so let's let it uh, go ahead and settle down, make some coals. We got a pretty good bed of coals in there. You wanna see that? I mean, I think it's gonna be a good bed of coals. Let me just see if I can tilt you over there real quick and show you. Yep, yeah, not bad, huh? All right. Now, We'll take the steak, put it on the grill, and put it on the stove. How about that? A little bit of flames, but not a lot. So. Now we'll just see how well that works. While we're doing that, how about if we make some toast? Got the last two little pieces of sourdough bread here. We'll go ahead and stick them on the toaster there and just see how well this thing works for toast. I've not tried this before. There we go. Okay, I didn't have quite enough coals in there, so I had to put some more wood on. And that's always a challenge there, you know, because you gotta not burn the steak, but I'm doing pretty well here. The toast, is getting toasty. So we'll put some butter on that in just a minute. And um, I like my steaks kind of medium to medium, let's see. I guess probably getting close to done. Let me just open this thing up and have a cut, have a cut on it and see. That's what I do, so. It's like it might be a little, little less done than I usually eat, let's see. Actually, by golly, she's pretty close to medium. I think we're gonna call her done, man. Wow, look at that. Um, so, I'm gonna use the top of my uh, top of my bowl here as a plate. We'll let that cook a minute longer. Ooh, get my, my toast off of here. Get my butter, 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 butter. My uh, do all carry all knife. Yeah, you gotta have some good butter on your toast. That's a lot of butter for that little piece of toast, isn't it? We'll give it about half of that, how about that? Put the other one on this slightly bigger piece of toast. Ooh. Yep, yeah, and. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, look at that, would you just look at it, oh yeah. Pretty good there, let's have a look at the steak now. One more look, I think we're gonna call her done. Let me pull her off here, put that over here, that'd be okay. 
God made dirt, dirt won't hurt, right? Oh, uh, good. <laughs> God made dirt, dirt won't hurt. But well, there we go. I'm gonna let that boil off the uh, the uh, stuff there. Let's just have a have a taste of the steak here. See what you like. Just show you this steak and this toast. You can see that it is done. There's the steak and there's the toast. Let's just see how she tastes. Mmm. Mmm. See that crunch? Good stuff. Well. <laughs> That was a hopefully reasonably coherent look at the Siege wood stove. I really like the stove. Sorry, a couple things I really like about it. I like the side toasters. That's something I've not seen before. Maybe somebody makes them, I don't know. I like the fact that it is it's very, very solid. Very lightweight, very solid. But just to show you, I got that much wood there left. And how full that is so I might have used like maybe a half a bag of this I don't think you could do that with an open fire I'm sure you can't do that with an open fire as a matter of fact um, and cook a steak I like the grill now this is a little extra extra money about 30 bucks extra something like that and the uh, it weighs more obviously but man it just works um, boils water great um, cook a steak on it Put it in the back, it's like, weighs less than a pound. It's just pretty stinking cool. This is real hot still, but let's try it. It's good tea too, so. That, anyway, I'm gonna stop rambling and start eating. That's the Siege Stove from Siege Stoves, and there'll be a link in the video description below. I'm not making any money on this or anything. They sent me the stove to show you, but I just thought it was pretty cool. It is made in the USA, 100%, I like that. Uh, very well made. Um, I'm giving this one a double thumbs up, and I really, really like the little um, the little option just to use any can too. And, and honestly, the the uh, cross pieces that come with the stove are the same cross pieces you can use. So if you buy the stove, you can also use them just if you, if you to make a can, or you can get an extra set. And you know, while you're um, cooking your steak, you can be boiling your water. So seedstoves.com and um, Thanks again to the folks at Siege Stoves for sending me this so I can show it to you. Thanks to the folks at Groove Life for sponsoring today's video. And as always, thank you for watching Survival on Purpose. I put out a brand new video every Friday and Saturday, sometimes random videos throughout the week. I really appreciate the support. Once again, my name is Brian. You are watching Survival on Purpose. Remember, survival is not an accident, so be prepared. And don't be hungry. See you next time.